Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Limit of Sleeping Beauty, a Japanese film from 2017. Aki came to Tokyo 10 years ago to become an actress. She's now 29 years old and works as a magician's assistant, but her parting lifestyle propels her on a hallucinogenic trip that blends her past, present, and unreality. So within the opening first five minutes, you know that this is going to be an odd movie. The protagonist is talking to a weird-looking bald dude who kind of looks like a, like a clown, a mutated clown or something. And he asks her, you know, do you think time is something that always flows? In fact, time does not flow. Past, present, and future, they share one space. You're in them all at the same time. The idea that time flows is only in your mind. And then we're transported to what seems to be the past. So this girl meets a young man who invites her to live as in his magician-themed bar. But then we are quickly transported to a variety of events at different times in this woman's life. The limit of sleeping beauty is all over the place, but Aki's relationship with this man is what the entire film revolves around. So near the beginning... You know, you question whether or not these two characters are really going to have an emotional connection, but they eventually do. And then one of the most important things that I want to convey in this review is that this film has a heart to it. You know, despite being an art house style film that kind of bounces around a lot in its storytelling, there are some moviegoers out there who tend to avoid art house movies because they find them to be rather unengaging on an emotional level. If you're one of those people, I do not think that that criticism really applies much to The Limit of Sleeping Beauty because there's a spark and a passion that the filmmakers have towards the protagonist, which leads to some you know, emotionally resonant moments, I think. I think this, this is one of the most important accomplishments of this film because it helps to establish a connection to the viewer while at the same time operating kind of like an art house movie. Another thing to note is that the protagonist is experiencing the same disorientation that the viewer experiences. So she's on this journey with you as you're watching the film. So if you're a little bit confused at times with what's going on, so is she. <laughs> you know what I mean? So by the end of the movie, you should also experience the same sense of clarity that she does. And I think that that helps the film to maintain that connection with the viewer. Editing and sound design are really good in this. Uh, this shifts a lot between different events and times, so it's important to transition between the scenes properly. And this film uses abrupt cutting very well to create like this, like I said, disorienting experience that's somehow not frustrating to watch. It's actually quite a bit of fun to watch, in my opinion. You know, hard to explain, but I really liked the cuts in this. Also, the volume and sound design around the cuts is well done because it feels like you're waking up from a dream when it shifts between the different scenes and uh, hopefully you get uh, hopefully you know what I'm talking about while you're watching it now as you might expect this is a very psychological film with a main character who might be losing her mind right but I found this to be really interesting stuff you know there are individual scenes that have good dialogue you know like how she talks to another potential actress who is auditioning for the role of Ophelia in Hamlet and there are other quirky aspects as well, like how she sleeps in a bed that's on the rooftop of a building. And uh, there are many scenes that take place in that rooftop, which is actually kind of neat. The weird-looking clown dude also shows up quite a bit as well, but he's, he's kind of a likable guy. The lead actress, Yuki Sakurai, is very good. Most viewers will recognize her from the Sion Sono film, Tag. In The Limit of Sleeping Beauty, she has to constantly shift between portraying a naive, good-natured woman during the older scenes and a more mature, seasoned woman during the more recent scenes in the film. You know, remember, she came to this town as, as an aspiring actress, but it really hasn't gone anywhere. So the scenes from back in the day, she's going to be a little bit more positive. In this more recent scene, she's going to be a little bit more uh, frustrated, right? Uh, there's definitely an element of rise and descent for an actress uh, in the real world, and she has to nail that per uh, portrayal, and I think that she does. She does it very well. Uh, viewer note that there is a bit of nudity, 
sex and a few slightly creepy sequences in this, so it does have a slight edge to it. Nothing uh, gratuitous, but it's got a little edge, uh, which is similar to all of the Japanese films I've really covered this week. The film is also very nicely shot, with some uh, visually pleasing environments like dance clubs and bars. A lot of scenes in dance clubs and bars in this. It also incorporates a lot of music and dance, which makes sense given the settings. The score is very dance and techno driven, but in a good way. And all of this creates kind of a very energetic and briskly paced film because of how it's presented. You know, it's only 90 minutes long, uh, but it feels even shorter than that. You know, the opening 20 minutes in particular, it just fly right by, fly right by. So, you know, even though this, you might think that this is kind of like a weird art house style film, a lot of weird art house style films are slow. You know what I mean? Which might not be a problem. Some of my favorite films of all time are like that. But uh, this one has a nice little briskness to it. You know, it keeps moving and it keeps you engaged in what's happening. So that's it's a little bit different in that, that sense. Now, in my review of Liverleaf not too long ago on this channel, I mentioned that that film kind of excited me when I was watching it, and I had the same feeling while watching The Limit of Sleeping Beauty. Now, certainly one of the more interesting movies to come out in recent years, in my opinion. You know, I read some reviews online from people who freaking love this movie, like uh, really love it. But it's a bit of a risk. You know, I'm just telling you, I'm recommending this movie pretty strongly to you, but it's still a bit of a risk because it's kind of an odd film, okay? You know, some nights, you might want to watch a safe film. You know, a film that you know you'll like. Other nights, you might want to take a bit of a chance on a movie that you might dislike or you might love. And uh, this is one of those movies, you know what I mean? So I, I definitely recommend this. This film is currently available on Region 3 DVD with English subtitles. And as always, we'll see you next time.